Welcome back to Questing Beast. I'm Ben, and today we're going to be looking at this review copy I was sent of Fever Swamp. So Fever Swamp is a small hex crawl written by Luke Gearing, and it is illustrated by Andrew Walter and published by the Melzonian Arts Council. Um, a recent book I've reviewed by the Melzonian Arts Council is Troika, which I loved. I thought it was a fantastic little book. So I'm very curious to see um, what Fever Swamp has to offer. Now, Fever Swamp isn't explicitly a module for Troika. It's more for general OSR stuff. And it's a great example of taking a hex crawl and making it very compact, very easy to read, and very usable for people who want to experiment with that form of running D&D games. I know that in a recent uh, live stream that I did, I mentioned Hexcrawl and I got a lot of people asking questions about it who hadn't heard of it before. So I think this could be a great place to start. Um, let's dive right in and see what Fever Swamp has to offer. So first off, it's interesting in, that, in the fact that it is a hardcover book, although it's only 26 pages long. So it's quite compact and it's very well constructed. I've had no problems with that. Uh, no cracking of the binding because it does appear to be an actual sewn binding, which is quite unusual. Yeah, it's a sewn binding for something on this scale. It's definitely not what you'd get from a print-on-demand publisher. This is put out by some people who know how to publish high-quality physical books. Now, as you can expect from the title, it is all set in a swamp. And here we have the hex map. Um, I love the map making here, actually. I think it's a really great way to draw a swamp. It's, it really gives you a sense of the, um, the wet and the slog that you're going to have to go through in order to explore this place. Um, so it's a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by 10 or so hex map. And it has 14 major locations scattered around. Now, like books like Lamentations of Flame Princess, Fever Swamp does a great job in using the end papers of the book for really useful things. So the quick reference map and the encounter tables are right here. And in the back of the book, we can see that it has the diseases of fever swamp. So all the tables that you'll need to reference are very easy to find. It's a great example of book design. So like most hex crawls, there's going to be something of a procedure in which you are going to travel from hex to hex and you're going to find out what's there. Either it might be a special encounter uh, listed in the book, or it could be you're rolling on the random encounter tables. And the random, random encounter tables are designed such that um, it's going to match the kind of area that you're in. We have a rumor table, very important for giving players hooks uh, and a reason to explore the fever swamp. We have basic encounters, and we have sodden, jealous, dead. We have a number of tribes living in the swamp, each of which has uh, a number of distinct things about them that's going to set them apart and make them memorable. We have uh, a village full of cultists, and we have this useful little table down here so you can physically check off stuff um, as you encounter them. We have some short summaries of the people living in the town of Clank. We have a very cool little dungeon here, which is, actually takes place within the body of an ossified creature of some sort. along with some very interesting uh, combat encounters that are all have a, have a weapon with some sort of unique twist to it. I love the art, by the way. I know that I've seen Luke, uh, sorry, Andrew Walder's illustrations in something else. His stuff looks really familiar, but it, it captures just the right tone of cartoonishness mixed with horror that fits right in with the tone of this book. We have some sunken shipwrecks that you can explore. And here we have a lot of these special hexes uh, described. Some mushroom spirit houses, scum boggles, hunger the crocodile, some ruins. We have some swamp, uh, sorry, swamp witches. Uh, we have a fallen monastery, a number of different ruins. Um, we have an interesting feature where you have to travel around by boat. It's mostly a swamp. You just can't go by land. And there's a type of creature that basically has these long spikes for feet that wander around like they're on stilts. And they're very dangerous because they like to impale not only you, they like to impale your boat, and thus preventing you from moving and traveling from place to place. 
So a lot of interesting obstacles that you're going to have to deal with in terms of uh, problem solving. We have a number of interesting monsters, some of which you may have seen before in other D&D stuff, but quite a few of which are unique. For example, the Candle Thief. These spirits of lost children are desperate for a light to lead them home. Their shadowy forms clamber through the trees, their large blank faces staring greedily from above. Once the time is right, they reach down, snatching any candles, lanterns, and oil before hurriedly fleeing. Uh, they can be pacified with sweet treats. They will not try to fight. So a great example of a monster that doesn't provoke necessarily a combat encounter, but which still drains your resources, your light, but which can be solved through non-combat methods. That's a very OSR type of monster to make, and I really appreciate that. Giant leeches, grandfather rot, a giant fungal godling of some sort that you can deal with. Your stilts walkers. And we have one of the most interesting features of this little hex crawl is the corpse pile. So it's basically an entire hex. And hexes are miles and miles across. An entire hex full of zombies, full of undead corpses. And these, these corpses not only take up that entire hex and will just you know massacre you if you wander into that hex, but they leak into the nearby hexes as well. And this hex travels around the map, which I thought was a great little element of dynamism that's going to mix things up and force every play of uh, Fever Swamp to be different. Because if you have a hex that is basically impassable and which is leaking undead everywhere, traveling around the map, that's going to change the way that you travel through it. You're going to want to go around it for the most part. And if the corpse pile is nearby, that's going to affect the types of encounters that you find in the hex that you're in. I thought that was really cool as a way to just add, um, like I said, some dynamism to what could be a fairly static environment. Rules for sinking boats that is very simple and easy to learn. And we have diseases at the very end because it's fever swamp. You got to have your diseases. So over time, the longer your players hang out in this horrible swamp, they're going to become just riddled with all sorts of horrible diseases that are going to become funnier and funnier. At least that's how my group would interpret it. Um, but also just draining you, slowing you down, and eventually killing you um, just from the pileup of the miasma and diseases, which is just so thematic. I love it. So that's it. It's a short little book, but it is, I think, a great little primer for people who want to try out a hex crawl because it is so focused and so clear about how everything works and it has a variety of really interesting and solid encounters and locations for you to explore. As always, I'll put a link uh, down in the description where you can pick up your own copy of Fever Swamp. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel and you can see lots of other um, OSR reviews and books in the old school style. You can also join me on Patreon if you want to support me making more videos like this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you guys later.